Hello everyone and welcome to episode 158 of Chairside Live. We've got a great lineup for you today. First we're going to take a look at an exciting obsidian veneer case. And then, yours truly is heading up to the operatory where I'm going to hop in the chair of Dr. Ana Maria Murison. But first, let's explore a veneer case using our obsidian lithium silicate ceramic material. This high strength monolithic ceramic is more than just strong, it's also beautiful. Let's see it in action. In this next case, patient was unhappy with her gummy smile, her teeth, and her facial profile. After carefully planning the solution to her problem with our in-house oral surgeon, Dr. Peter Shear, her treatment included aesthetic crown lengthening by gingivectomy and ostectomy to reduce the amount of gingival display and also genioplasty to correct her facial profile. After all options were presented, patient also agreed to 10 prep veneers using our obsidian lithium silicate ceramic. To demonstrate what the possibilities were for improving patient smile, a cosmetic resin markup was performed chairside at the consultation appointment. Using the diagnostic wax up, I did the mock-up using a potty wash impression matrix and after injecting laxatemp material, I placed it in the patient's mouth. After the patient had the opportunity to look at her smile, the decision was made for 10 obsidian veneers that will have the centrals longer than the laterals. After the gingiva was allowed to heal from the surgery, another pre-evaluating set of temporaries was used that took in consideration the gingival repositioning. I used this set to place facial depth cuts. Here I use a depth cut burr from Brassler USA that provided a 0.3 mm depth gingivally, 0.5 mm at the middle third, and 0.7 mm incisively, providing a preparation that follows the three different planes. Once I was done with the depth cut, I marked the horizontal grooves with a pencil and used the curette to flick the matrix off. To finish the preparation, a 856012 round ended diamond burr was also used from Brassler. This temporary mock-up prevents any unnecessary entry into the tooth and helped me keep the preparation on the enamel and precisely control my facial depth cuts. Before final impression, patient wear the temporary for an additional week. Great care was taken to open the gingival embrasure so not to create any damage to the papilla. At the final impression appointment, almost always after the removal of the temporary, there will be some area that needs to be cleaned up and so using a white stone will remove any residual from the area where the temporary was spot edge. Using a double core technique to expose the tooth apically will definitely aid in the help of the technician to see the tooth below the margin so that the technician will have a better idea on how to contour the margin and blend the obsidian material into the existing tooth contour. Before taking the final impression, I use grip strip to carefully separate the interproximals so that the technician could see the margins. After removing the second cord, I use capture vinyl polysiloxane impression system. Here I'm syringing medium body on the prepared teeth while my assistant was loading up the tray. A full arch impression material was filled with capture heavy body. The impression was left to set in the patient's mouth for three minutes. Also a hard bite was taken with capture material in order to better communicate the shade to the lab, also stamp shade was taken. Available in Vita Classic and bleaching shades, obsidian material has great optical properties and it can be pressed or produced via CAD CAM. Here is the final cementation appointment. Obsidian pressed veneer were tried in with water to ensure color and to ensure that everything fits. At this point, the patient got a chance to look in the mirror and approve her new restorations. After cleaning the prepared teeth with preppies pumice from Whipmix, G5 was put down as an antibacterial and desensitizer agent, and because the preparation was on enamel, I could use an ADEC air to dry to prevent any contamination.
A and B primers was applied to get the tooth ready for the resin cement. Prior to cementation, the intaglia surface of each veneer was treated with IvoClean for 20 seconds. Before loading the veneers with Multilink, also Monobond Plus was applied for 60 seconds. In terms of isolation, I used cotton rolls and metric bands. The veneers were placed in two sets at the time and hold into place using wooden sticks. Applying light pressure on the facial and the incisal to ensure correct seating. For this case, I thought it was easier to bond the veneer in place starting with the posteriors to get them out of the way. Then I went back to the two centrals and worked my way towards the cuspids. Prior to the final cure, I used small amount of glycerin liquid strip from Ivoclar to ensure that there will be no oxygen inhibiting at the margins. Once the veneers were tucked and waved into place, the matrix was removed to allow the removal of excess cement. I used an explorer to cleave off the excess and a little saw to separate the cement from the interproximal area. With an average biaxial strength of 397 megapascals, obsidian lithium silicate ceramic exceeds the strength requirement for all ceramic restorations making this material a good choice for this case because the veneer were extended posteriorly to the maxillary premolars. Patient bite and lateral extrusion were checked and final restorations were evaluated for phonetics. After all the necessary adjustment, a rubber cup was used to polish the final restoration. Overall, this obsidian smile makeover exceeded our patient expectation. All right, now it's time for you to come with me as we head up to our operatory to meet Dr. Murasan and watch as she uses our camouflage nano hybrid composite on me. Come on, let's go. All right, so we made our way up to the operatory and I'm here in the chair of Dr. Anna Maria Murashan and they're gonna do some work on me today, but I'm not worried because she's got some extensive experience. You've been at the lab for nearly 20 years. Can you tell us a little bit about your history here? I got hired in 1995 as a dental technician in the biotem department and uh, worked there for a few years, after which I decided to become a certified dental technician. So for that, I had to work in porcelain and ceramic. And after that, uh, I think it was 16 years after working in the lab, I decided to apply to dental school. And um, I got accepted right about the time I gave birth to my son. Mm -hmm. And I came back about two and a half years ago, just came back home because um, I grew up in this company and I wanted to come back and give back to everybody. Great. Well, awesome. Well, I'm excited to be in your chair today because I know I'm in good hands. Um, can you tell everyone a little bit about what we're going to be doing today? So sure, we're going to replace a felling sealant that over time developed uh, secondary decay, probably because of improper isolation or maybe saliva contamination. We're going to remove the caries and replace the felling sealant that you have in your mouth, and we're going to use our very own camouflage nano-hybrid composite. Although this material was developed having the technician in mind to add aid in their uh, fabrication of inlay on lays grounds and bridges, today I would like to see how this material uh, behave in oral environment and how I will be able to recreate nature using uh, the camouflage composite. All right, great, let's get started. One relatively small cavity lesion in an otherwise intact arch classifies Megan as a patient with low risk for dental caries. Using local anesthetic with vasoconstrictor, I am getting Megan ready for the procedure and to receive the rubber dam. I like to use the rubber dam because it controls the soft tissue and increases my visibility access. I think it's essential to have a dry field to prevent the cavity from contamination by the oral bacteria and be able to attain the best marginal seal for the adhesive restoration. Here, I'm using caries detector dye that helps stain the collagen that had become denatured by the carious process. Although this is a simple class one preparation, it is this type of shape of preparation that can be challenging. The shape of a class one preparation is described as having the highest configuration C factor, and it is the most susceptible to the effect of shrinkage stress. A porcelain round burr in a slow speed handpiece will carefully remove all the stained infected soft dentin. 
The cavity is acid etched with a 37% uh, phosphoric acid to first etch the enamel, then the dentin. After rinsing and carefully drying the cavity, OptiBond Solo Plus from Kerr was used for direct bonding application of my material of choice, Universal Camouflage Composite. Because class 1 restoration comes with an increased C factor, the developing curing contraction stress of bonded surfaces can increase too. In my attempt to control the shrinkage and decrease the C factor, I like the cavity to receive small composite increments. I use small incremental buildup of universal camouflage composite and with proper lighting and by the ability of camouflage composite to be placed in small 2 mm increments, the effect on clinical success can be improved. Universal camouflage composite has a flexural strength of about 134 megapascals. Because of its flexural strength, I think that camouflage composite is a material that can exhibit an ideal combination of aesthetic strength and ease of manipulation in the oral environment. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Chairside Live. On behalf of everyone here at Glidewell Laboratories, we thank you for watching and hope you'll come back next week.